But again, we're keeping it all the way basketball. We got Scoop with us tonight. Uh, Scoop, we got to start with the, with the biggest story in the league uh, that came out this past week. Obviously, Russell Westbrook on his way to D.C. for John Wall and a first round pick. What were you hearing about this trade and what's the overall reaction from everybody inside the league? Um, well, I mean, the, the Wizards were a team that were, were of interest uh, as, as it relates to what Russell wanted and you know, what the Rockets were able to get for him. Um, ironically, the 2023, the 2023 pick uh, will actually be a, a, a pick that could come in handy. Um, that is the year that if Bronny James uh, does not, if the, if the uh, collective bargaining agreement changes and you know, players are able to come out of high school once again, it would be something to pay attention to look out for um but but directly to your question about you know russ and and, and as well as uh john wall um number one it pairs a uh, wall uh, with former college teammate uh, demarcus cousins in kentucky once again um and and also really and truly um it gives uh it gives um i guess russell a fresh start uh i think when you look at just over the last couple of years um, with the Oklahoma City Thunder, you know, he requested out after you know, Paul George ultimately left and went to the Clippers. Um, it's twice that Russell has been able to dictate or pick which team he wanted to go to. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, Wizards did that for him. He didn't get along with Tillman Fertetta, I'm told. Um, you know, there were some questions just about political allegiance and really just fit overall uh, with that team. Uh, it's possible Harden could still be on his way out, uh, particularly um, with some of the things that have been said over the last couple of days, just about training camp and, and, and um, you know, but that could be due to the you know, protocol with um, COVID-19. But, you know, the, the Rockets kind of um, over the last few months, um, even during the playoffs, there were some things that were going on, like, you know, over the last couple of years, Mike D'Antoni, former head coach, uh, his, his coaching staff was diminishing more and more and more. Um, they, they took Irv Rowland, um, who was Harden's um, trainer as and doubled as a, a development coach with the Rockets. They, they got rid of him. Um, and then just over the years, over the last couple of years, things have just changed. Um, and then, you know, ultimately their GM left. Um, and, um, you know, I know that Jeff Van Gundy, uh, as well as uh, uh, Paul Silas, or excuse me, Steven Silas, son of Paul Silas. Silas is now the head coach of the Rockets, his first head coaching position. Um, those were some of the guys that were in the running. And, uh, you know, there were some things that went on behind the scenes as it related to, you know, the direction and power and all of those things. And uh, ultimately, the Rockets are shelved themselves. And it really kind of goes back to a few years ago uh, during the NBA Finals or when they had a chance to go to the NBA Finals when Chris Paul was the point guard. And they just, you know, the last couple of years, they just keep uh, losing players year by year by year. And, you know, here we are now. Uh, John Wall is the point guard for the Rockets, but um, you know, Harden could be on his way out still. He requested a trade, and you know, the Nets are on the top of his list as are the 76ers. The Boston Celtics have inquired. I gotta I gotta go back for for a second, Scoop. Um, because you, you you brought up something and we've been going through a lot uh in this country over the past couple of months. And recently just, you know, we got through the election even though um, the current guy in the office is still trying to uh, contest it. But um, you said there was, there was a little underlining reasoning in, in there of why uh, Westbrook wanted out. And, I, and I, I, I'm from what I've heard, Harden kind of wants out for the same reason, and that's for, uh, for Titter's support of President Trump. Um, yes. Okay. So I, I, all right, I wanted because I know you posted that on your on your IG. So I wanted to get into that a, a little bit. What do you want to know? <laughs> well, well, I, mean, scoop, I need to scoop. How how accurate is that? Like, is is that one of the the main factors and why they both kind of want out of Houston? And before you answer that, scoop really quick, because I want to double down on that because I was I was going to go that same direction. So you you have reported that, and then I've also heard that played into a factor why Daryl Morey requested his release as well. So if you can elaborate on that as well, if you have any inside info on that. I spoke to Daryl a couple of weeks ago. We talked about everything but that. Um, but, you know, as it relates to the Rockets at large. Um, why are you laughing? <laughs> well, I, no, I mean, I, I, we're laughing. I, again, I think Tripp and I both, you know, we laughing about it because, you know, 
the, the, the story has been circulating. He, he allegedly told Tillman that he wanted time off to spend with his family. And within two weeks, he takes the Sixers job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I could, I could, yeah. I mean, but the thing is with, with Daryl Morey, um, the Daryl Morey thing it, from just different things I've seen and heard and read the combination of all those and the NBA is like a big puzzle. You, you read something, you talk to someone, you kind of fit that piece where it goes. But um, I think this Maury thing kind of goes back to China. And I think that, I think because he took that job in Philadelphia um, and because COVID happens, I think some people get amnesia. Um, the Rockets underperformed in the playoffs. Uh, and I think if, the, I, from what I have heard, um, Tillman Fertitta had interest in bringing in at one point, Jeff Van Gundy. And Van Gundy and Maury go back to when Van Gundy was the head coach of the Rockets and years ago, when Steve Francis was there and then Grady came in, Yao Ming was there. I think that was going to be an oil and water type of situation. Um, Steven Silas ended up becoming head coach. Um, Maury got a better job as a team president in Philadelphia 76ers. Um, personally, uh, I think Philadelphia got better in the offseason by name. They still got to play and produce. But to me, Elton Brand is somebody who I feel like lost, some have said has lost power, you know, and, and I think I, I, I cannot nail that down. I have not spoken to Elton about that, but um, I think that Maury has relationships and has been doing, has been around front office into workings for a longer period of time. To me, Philadelphia would make sense if Philadelphia was looking to bring in Harden because he has the relationship with Harden. The NBA is a relationship business. Now, um, as it relates to the Rockets and the whole political thing, uh, as it relates to President Trump and uh, just his make, make America great uh, movement. I th I've heard um, that um, there are a lot of people who were turned off in Houston um, by just um, his his public declaration. I mean, I, I was he wearing mega you know, hats in the locker room? Is that? <laughs> I don't know that to be true, but I just you know he. I know he has he has publicly supported uh, President Trump. Yeah. I know that he's made money. Versus maybe James Dolan, the owner of the Knicks, is a lot more quiet about it. But you know, it's almost like, you know, I, I grew up in the church. Maybe if you're sitting in the barbershop, there are people who don't want to hear you witnessing to them in the barbershop. They want to talk about sports and women. And maybe in that vein, comparatively, it may have been the, t the same type of situation. So um, with to your question, yeah, I, I, I mean, particularly in this climate, um, there are uh, there are players who are turned off by it, but let's not act as if there are not many NBA owners who have donated uh, to uh, President Trump. If I'm not mistaken, I know James Dolan has. If I'm not mistaken, I know the Orlando Magic uh, are, are Trump supporters. Tillman Fertitta is a Trump supporter, but I also think that's so layered um, for this reason. I have friends who are Democrats. I have friends who are independents. I have friends who are Republicans. Uh, we can agree to disagree on some things, but sometimes it's not even about the person who's in office. It's about their purse, their wallet, and their bottom line. And while they may not like that person, um, it fits their agenda of how they choose to live their life. Um, so I, I, I think in this case, it's different. I think Tillman Fertitta, just based off of what I've heard, I think it's a situation where um, it's both. I think he supports President Trump, and I think that he fits his bottom line financially. And I think that may have rubbed some people within that organization the wrong way. Plus, the combination of the fact that, you know, just over the last few years, there's just been a decaying of 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 wins and skills and and more. You know, Chris Paul went on the greener pastures in Oklahoma City, and and Dad on near beat the 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 Rockets in the playoffs. Didn't happen. Game seven, I believe, but. You know, the Rockets ended up losing to the Lakers and, you know, the Lakers, you know, played the, the, the Nuggets in the conference finals and the Lakers won the championship, beating the Heat. So it just seems like over the years, I mean, even if you go back to the playoffs, you know, uh, very openly Mike D'Antoni expressed that he had no interest in returning uh, 
and resigning uh, with the Houston Rockets. So, you know, that, that, that kind of shows you just where they were as a team morale wise. And, you know, and here we are. I think I answered your question. <laughs> I, I, got, I got another question for you, Scoop. But let me say, let me say this really quick before I ask my question. Um, I want to go back because the reason why I was laughing actually is because people don't want to give you the credit that you deserve. Um, so I just like the fact that you had you light flexed on. Yeah, I was on the phone with Daryl Moore, you know, a couple of times, and uh, we we chopped it up and whatnot. Oh. So no, because we 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 like to give people their flowers while they're here. So I, you know, what I'm saying like I, I gotta let people know like you you can't you can't question Scoop, man. Scoop has been doing this for a very long time, and he's better than probably a lot of your favorites at, 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 at his job. So I just want to give you, you know what I'm saying, give you a little bit of, of props while we got you on, on the show. Um, my question is, we saw how that situation, you know what I'm saying, worked out with, with Westbrook and Harden. Do you feel like that's going to be a trend uh, moving forward where players will, will not want to play for owners that, uh, I guess, share a, have a difference in political view i mean that's that's no different than you or i if we work for a company and we don't agree with the views of your employer you look for another job the only difference is these are high profile athletes that are brands outside of the, the corporation that is the nba um i mean i, I think to answer your question perhaps i mean you, you look at how outspoken lebron james has become about everything. Um, you look at Kyrie Irving, uh, who, you know, has, was expressive about the BNB bubble. Um, and then, you know, when that, the, the shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin happened, everybody said Kyrie was right. You know, so I think when you look at just where we are politically, um, I think the NBA, uh, different than the other major sports, where the players often do run uh, the establishment, at least as talent goes, um, you could see it. Um, I think that you're seeing it in New York in a different way with the Knicks, where key marquee players don't are not wanting to play here. But I think the Knicks is a separate entity because you have seen in real time what happened with Spike Lee. You've seen in real time what happened with Charles Oakley. Oakley yep. And then Carmelo Anthony has a lot of these guys is OG. And so I'm sure they go to him and ask questions and yep. there you have it. So it's like, it's seen and unseen this dialogue. Um, you know, I can tell you that, you know, that's why Kyrie Irving ultimately did not sign with the Knicks. That's part of the reason why I won, because he wanted to establish his old identity as a team he grew up watching. And the Nets who were in New Jersey at the time, and then, you know, move to Brooklyn and you can create your own identity. It's like LeBron growing up in Cleveland and seeing Michael Jordan because he's in the Midwest and, you yeah. know, Chicago is the West is New York, but you know, um, he ultimately did not sign with the Bulls and he went to the, to the Miami Heat and, you know, kind of established an identity with his friends that he came in the league with, with Chris Bosh and uh, Dwayne Wade. So I, I think when you talk about players to your initial question about, you know, just choosing where they want to go and more, um, you know, Kurt Flood gave was the blueprint as it related to giving players the option through free agency to do what they needed to do. So, you know, I think that, that, that I think that's a carry over to where we are today as a society with athletes. They have a bigger platform in the voice. Yeah. This is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You watch a real friends do a talk. Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.